there's so much more benefit to boxing without the fighting. And that's what I really want to give to people. I, I want to teach the sport of boxing, but also it provides all the benefits with it. It provides with mental health, physical health, mindset, uh, spirituality. They all feel empowered at the end. You know, you feel strong, you feel confident, you're ready to tackle your day. Uh, whatever stress you had coming in disappears <laughs> towards the end of the session. This is my good friend Matthew, who is a boxing coach for absolute beginners. He was kind enough to contribute his time, effort, and talent to the Justin Augustin Fitness app in the form of beginner boxing videos. In his words, boxing might seem barbaric to many, but Matthew explains that behind the actual fighting, the technique, the discipline, and the art of boxing makes it such a beautiful sport that he fell in love with, that he is now teaching with passion. Boxing is becoming one of the most popular sports amongst beginners in fitness because not only does it make a great tool for self-defense, it builds strength, power, agility, cardio, and it teaches you mental fortitude. His in-person classes are fun and engaging. If you live in the Montreal area, I highly recommend you attend his sessions. If not, you can find the first series of his online classes on the Justin Augustin Fitness app now available. Now, let's get into a conversation I had with Matthew about boxing, his passion, his career, and how it all unfolded. I'm also almost blown away of how how far I've, I've came, right? Like yeah. when I speak it out loud, I'm like, man, I was actually in that position. Yeah. So like basically it, during COVID times, I was going really like, I guess with everyone else, we're all struggling with COVID, uh, with work, uh, you know, being at home all the time. And it was at a point in my life where it was, I was in a, like a loop. So I, I was just doing my nine to five. I used to work at Rogers as a collection agent. And I was doing it just to do it as a means to to get some income. Mm -hmm. But it's not something I really liked. And I was already there for like over five years. There's that where it was just recurrent and I was not happy with what I was doing. What were you doing exactly? Like what was your, what was your. So I was on uh, like call center and I was just taking calls from customers that like, so it's collections for a telecom company. Yeah. So when you don't pay, they call in, they try to get their line back, you try to negotiate. So it was very, uh, it was very heavy because you would get a lot of, especially at that time, you know, COVID, the excuse like, oh, I'm not working anymore, which is all valid. But at one point, you still have to do your job pressure from corporations to be like still collect, you know what I mean? So, so every I call that you got that. or every call that you made, pretty much you had a, like an angry customer on the other line. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was it was pretty rough. Like so, and I was already there for a long time, right? So it was not it's not like something new where I was particularly uh, happy about or I'm learning something new. Is already towards the end that I actually wanted to leave. So there was that. There was COVID going on, and I was also going through a, a breakup at that time. Mm -hmm. So it was like I felt really everything was like crashing down in a sense. Mm -hmm. So. I was always into boxing as well. Like I was training boxing, doing my mint work, sparring. Uh, and I always loved the sport of boxing. It was like my go-to sport. You know, everyone like people like baseball, basketball. I mean, it was mostly combat sports. So we'll say boxing and UFC, but mainly boxing. And because I'm Filipino, you know, I have a bias, you know, with Manny Pacquiao. So he got me into the, like the foot in when I was younger. And then I just, from him, I basically got into the sport of boxing because of him. That, How old were you I, when you started like watching and really feeling watching? Yeah. I was maybe uh, I was not. I was like 18, 60, 16 to eight. I'm not too sure. I was watching other fights, but really, yeah. When I was got into it, it was really like 18, 18, mm -hmm. 19. That was really involved. Only with one fighter, so I was really in love with one fighter we'll say who's my favorite fighter but then i saw the actual sport of boxing like different you know styles skills yeah. mentalities and, and boxing is like you could have basically uh boxing from cuba that's one style one particular uh way of doing it then you have the russian boxing american style boxing you know so i started really looking at different and just the sport itself and the sport just it's just beautiful too. It's not like a, a lot of people think the sport's like very barbaric, but yeah. 
a lot of like there's science behind it, technique. There's reasons why you do a particular move. It's not just I'm hitting someone and you're getting hit back. Yeah, so yeah, of course. There's a it's so, a very technical sport. So technical. It was COVID, and you were going through this little rut, working at your nine to five, doing collections. You're going through a breakup. Um, what kind of made everything click? What? How did you get started your your coaching career? So basically, I. I didn't even start off to do a coaching career. Okay. So I had a friend, uh, uh, shout out to Linda. Uh, she's like my very, very first client. Uh, I would, I would say that she made it, she's part of it that made it happen. Right. So she was, uh, every, like a lot of people were all laid off or off work uh, during that time. Uh, so during April of 2020, I, think, I believe it's 2020 or 2021. I'm not too sure the exact year, but it was during the COVID times. She just had asked me, she's like, oh, I'm looking to lose weight. You know, I want to get a bit fitter and I'm and I'm here. I'm not really, I don't have a lot of hours. So I was like, you know what? I'm not, we have nothing to do. Let me just hold pads. And I always love boxing. So I'll teach you. But I was teaching her like, like the real thing, not just uh, one, two, one, two, five minutes. I look at she was like, I was really explaining it. I saw she was getting better every time. So it was just like 30 minutes or maybe 45 minutes at a time. Mm -hmm. And it didn't take long. It was maybe like three, four sessions in after like the session, she was like, you know what? You're hired. From there, it just like continued. People were asking me, oh, are you coach now? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. I, but I was, I was a bit nervous. I had like, uh, how do you call it? The imposter syndrome? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So I was just exactly. like, I don't have no, like, you know, uh, no credentials, nothing at that point. Right. So I was just like, yeah, you know. <laughs> and how did you know, like, exactly the technique? Is it just being so obsessed with boxing? Were you shadow exactly. boxing, teaching yourself? How did you? Basically, like basically, I had a coach. Uh, well, still, I still go see him from time to time. Shout out to Coach Mo, Tiger Gym, uh, Cheek Fitness. I think that's the name of his uh, his brand. Shout out to him. But uh, he would coach me. And I just knew like from how he was teaching me that I could basically do the same. Mm -hmm. And because I love the sport so much, I wasn't just watching uh, fights. I was watching YouTube breakdowns. I would also like buy, uh, purchase like a few like how to's from very good coaches from the States. I would do them myself. And kind of like a once you do them class, yourself, right? exactly. Once you do them yourself, in that case, like you could basically teach others uh, yeah. how to do it as well. So once you know the sport, it's really just a way of communicating it. Yeah. It's like, uh, but that's really how I, I I knew the knowledge. But it's really a lot about I was watching videos, watching fights, looking how one coach would say one thing and seeing how it would translate in an actual fight, you know, and would be like, Oh shit. Okay. That works like that. Okay. That works like that. And a lot of these coaches were, would be very good at like using metaphors. Yeah. So I'd like, you know, pick, pick their minds sometimes like, Oh, this is good to, to teach. You know, this is good to, to, to grasp. And I, then I have my own way of just putting everything together and just uh, teaching it that way. So at what point did you realize, Oh my gosh, this is like a serious thing for me. I can, I can make this a career. Did you decide, okay, you know what? Let me get certified. Let me do this. Let me do that. So I could eventually quit my job. What was, what were the steps that you took and how did that all So happen? first, obviously just with Linda alone, I was not even there. So after a few uh, friends and then friends of friends. So a lot of it was word to mouth, mouth word to mouth, mm -hmm. like people talking, like friends talking about me. So once I got maybe a few, I would say like 10 to 20, like it it really went fast. So people were DMing me, oh, you coach? Said, yes, so I'd coach here, there. I was really doing, I was really doing everything. Like meaning I would go all the way to the East End, train someone there. From the East End, I would drive to Laval States, train someone in Laval, then Lachine. And with just a bit, because I didn't have the confidence at first. I knew what I was talking about, just in terms of just the, I would say the the social aspect, the like interpersonal skills with like a student coach, how that works. I wanted to build that first. Mm -hmm. So I, I had a few steps where like, okay, let me get a few clients, different clients. So like 
some older, younger kids, you know, my age, teens. So I wanted to touch a bit of, of everything, how you interact, how you teach it, because every person is different, right? Some, some people are visual, some people are, you know, they need to understand why the movement yeah. has to be made. Some of them are like uh, kinesthetic, like they need to like do it, right? They need to actually punch and, and so forth. So by having a few different clients and students, I got to grasp a bit more how to teach. And I would say around I'd say 10 to 15, I don't know how much time that actually took, but it was quite quick. Then I was like, you know what? I could actually do this. And by just doing it, concentrating on like my teaching, my coaching, how to deliver, like, uh, you know, plan a good class or plan a good uh, a session. Yeah. It seemed like everything just like fell into place. So you're obviously doing well. I mean, you know, I follow you on Instagram and I see the clients that you have. I love the fact that you have reoccurring clients who familiar faces who've been there since pretty much the beginning, right? Yeah. And and yeah. you're you're pretty much helping them progress from total beginners at boxing to some of them are just I'm, I'm seeing them do amazing combos and they look, you know, almost professional and or ready to fight. Like what is what is your type of clients um that you receive and 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 how do you work with them through their journey in boxing? Honestly, I would, I take, um, I don't have a specific clientele. That's what I love about it too. I, I vary from teenagers all the way up to, you know, to adult. Even like my eldest was like about 50 mm -hmm. in the 50s. So like you would adjust to every every type of uh, student or client, right? Obviously you're not gonna, if someone's like in their mid twenties or like early twenties, you could actually go hard and so forth. But uh, I don't have a specific clientele. I started, I think because I started with Linda, it, I had a lot of women that were very, very interested in trying it out. And they saw like, you know, boxing, a lot of the, the conception of boxing is that, oh, it's, if you're going to do boxing, you're going to fight. But not everyone's meant to fight or is interested in fighting. So they already lose like the interest because they think that, oh, if they're going to do boxing, they're going to fight. But there's so much more benefit to boxing without the fighting. And that's what I really want to give to people. I, I want to teach the sport of boxing, the technique, you know, and, and all that. But also it provides all the benefits with it. It provides with mental health, physical health, mindset, uh, spirituality, even if you, if you want to put that in there. Uh, it really pushes you like on all all aspects of, of, of life, I would even say. Like, you know, you get stronger, physically stronger, mentally stronger without having to get, you know, hit or hit someone else. Right. And so, what is the mindset of, of a boxer when, when you're when you're there outside of the ring, when you're practicing, when you're training, when you're at MPV? What, I, I, what's that mindset? I, what I say is just don't give up. You will miss, you know, you will miss a punch. You won't do it right, but just redo it. Reapply, do it better. It's like life, right? You, you'll fall down. You're not going to stay down. You're just going to yeah. do it, come back up. You redo it again. So it's really that mindset, like keep going, keep going, keep going. Right. When I was uh, practicing your drills that, that we filmed earlier, um, it, it was frustrating in the beginning. And like you mentioned, right, like you're going to miss a drill. You're going to miss your hand placement. You're going to feel uncoordinated in the beginning. And then you're right. Is that mindset of not giving up? If you just keep chipping at it, you'll start getting into the flow. And that's what I loved about it. It's like at the beginning is always this difficult and it feels a bit frustrating. But then if you just keep practicing at it then you get into this flow where you kind of feel free and it's like you're unlocking a new ability you know like wow yes. i've never done this before and it feels good and it feels absolutely good. yeah absolutely and, and you know like a lot of uh if anything all they they all feel empowered at the end you know you feel strong you feel confident you're ready to tackle your day uh whatever stress you had coming in disappears <laughs> towards mm -hmm. the end of the session so like i love seeing that like you'll come i've, I've i have uh clients that come in and it's funny too because i'd always joke around like how my classes or like my one on my, my privates my one-on-ones uh they're like therapy sessions sometimes you know they come in and you know some of them are like they're going through some stuff or you know they had a bad day and then 
we talk about it, then I focus their energy on the actual boxing class. We'll talk about it a bit, refocus on the boxing class. And then at the end, they're just like lighter, right? They feel good. You know, they always thank me. Thank you like for listening also for, you know, doing the class itself. So it, it's such a blessing to help them in that way too. And honestly, I was only there for boxing when I started. I was like, I'm just going to teach the sport. Uh, they're going to get good at boxing. But when you teach and you get these relationships with your clients who become, a lot of them become your friends, you know, you you get close to them and you, you share uh, moments within these classes where it's it's just beautiful to see, actually. Yeah, I, I can totally understand that, um, especially for beginner fitness and fitness in general, right? Like a lot of people say that gym is my therapy, lifting is my therapy, but boxing is probably the most important it's probably the most therapeutic thing that you can do because for someone that has a lot of pent up anger, a lot of pent up anxiety or stress, just throwing a punch at a bag or, you know, even if you're not hitting anything, like you said, people go in there with zero expectations to fight. Just going into that movement of uh, releasing that energy, uh, it could be so therapeutic. You mentioned that, um, you know, a lot of people, don't go in there with the idea of ever fighting in their life right right what right. what are those clients that that you mentioned earlier like what what was their reason for for signing up was it to get fit was it to like we mentioned release anger what what was their reasons it's it's a it's a combination of all of that a lot of, some of them wanted to learn to sport i get a lot i always wanted to try boxing because boxing is one of the oldest combat sports there is like gladiator times there was boxing right so they would always like uh, I always wanted to try. So some of them is just pure curiosity. They wanted to try the sport. Some of it is to get uh, a more healthy, fitter, right? They want to improve their cardio, their stamina. Some of them want to just like hit something for stress relief, you know, anxiety. Uh, a lot of them don't really come in for anxiety, but afterwards when they do a couple okay. classes, They'll tell me, they're like, I can't do a week without you because I need to release my stress. I, <laughs> I'm stressed. So it becomes like they're curious about the sport. They want to do it for like physical activity. But a lot of the times it ends up being a mental aspect. Oh, I need to do it. I need to get this anger out or else that anger is 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 put into something else, right? That could be a bit worse. So yeah. focus that energy into boxing. So that's pretty, pretty nice too that I figured out where after a few sessions, they're like, I just need it for for stress or like anxiety right <laughs> do yeah. they ever like you're you're wearing the equipment and you're like do you ever feel like oh my gosh you're a little bit stressed today you're like, a lot but what's good about boxing is that it, it's not just um okay you're stressed go punch punch everything out it's it's yeah. being able to control that anger because emotion really will be the downfall of you if you fight if you get your let emotion against you, you'll just go forward, not thinking about any response, and you'll go straight forward, and you'll get countered, or you'll get dropped, or you'll get hit. So I try to put that. So you're you're mad, you're angry, fine, but channel it here while it's controlled. Like don't just wall out and put everything into it, and you know hope for the best. No, control that, right? So I get the, I get them to channel their energy, like they get to to blow off steam, but not in the uh, not like a in a in a way where it's just just to blow off. There's there's also some, um, how do you say that discipline you need to learn. Like yeah. if you're angry, hold back when you need to hold back. Okay, punch now when you need to punch with power. Mm. Punch less because you're just trying to set up something. So, you know, you try to make them think while they're in that state of anger, which is very 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 hard, right? If you you listen to people get into fights and they're like, I saw red. That's what you want to avoid. Yeah, it's yeah. like to see red. If you see red, it's it's not just bad for you. You might commit something really bad to someone else or hurt someone else. So in boxing or any, I'm saying boxing, but honestly, like any martial art, any combat sport will give you that type of discipline where you could hold back. And a lot of these people do martial arts, boxing. They tend to get in less fights because they know what could happen, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's someone and they could hurt someone or they could get hit too. So it's a, it's a big benefit to to go in and being able to control your emotions. I really like that, that what you, what you said, it requires a lot of discipline and 
if you don't, then you're just going to be throwing haymakers. And that could be, right. you know, obviously in a fight, that's when a lot of people lose, right? They're just like wailing at it. They're angry. And then we, we, we watch some fights together where, you know, the cockiest and the loudest and the most angriest, you know, tend to be the ones that, that can't really focus on their technique and they just put right. all their training out the door and then eventually right. get hurt. And that's cool that you teach that, but it's also a great way to bring all that chaos in people's lives and recenter them and, and have them come back to discipline, come back to focus. And that kind of like alleviates all that redness that they might be seeing. And absolutely. Uh, and you're right. Yeah. That's, it's, a, it's an amazing form of, of therapy and um, yeah. yeah, just, just doing your program really kind of forced me to just think about so many different elements. And what I love about, about how you teach is you want people to uh, focus on the basics first and foremost and the technique. And, you know, I found myself thinking about my foot, my feet, placement, my hips, um, you know, where am I striking? And then when I do strike, I, you know, I'm not putting my pinky up there first. I'm, I'm, I'm right. striking so that I don't hurt my myself or, or uh, put myself in a vulnerable position. So having all these little key elements, it takes some work but I'm feeling that I'm getting a mental workout at the same time as I'm getting a physical workout. And in terms of physical workout, it's crazy because boxing doesn't seem like it's a lot, but that's, it's a huge, we're not doing burpees on the ground. We're not running miles. We're just literally staying in kind of like a square, but it's an amazing workout. Let's speak on that. Like how let's go on the workout factor, uh, the fitness factor of, of, of boxing, like, you can obviously you have beginners total beginners that are joining your classes and you have people that are more fit do you have to have some torp, some type of physical fitness to to join boxing or can you start from ground zero as for me we're i'm there for everyone i just want everyone to learn to support and get the benefits of it i don't think you need like a, a background or anything like that i think everyone can do it from uh, the older women, kids, everyone can do it. And from there, you just progress, right? You just yeah. go up. So it, some might be less coordinated. You know, I have had clients where they had zero, zero, zero athletic background. Like no gym, no, uh, they didn't do any sports really. Like they were basically on the couch, we'll say. And then they come up, they try to sport. It's a bit harder. It'll just take longer. That's one thing. You just take. You just need the patience to actually go through the motion and do the repetition. That's where the mind also kicks in, because once the mind is able to do and and be patient and be able to do the the, the punches or moves correctly, from there, then it'll start speeding up. Then we can start building cardio, building strength, right? Yeah. But I have a hurdle with all, like with anything when you learn is to put them back and be like, look, no, we have to do it like this first. Like power and speed will come after technique first, right? Foundation first. And anyways, power and speed can always be beat by like precision and timing. So it's yeah. it, it's it's useless in a sense to just start with that oh, power speed right away without even knowing properly. So if you master the technique, you will get more powerful properly. And you will increase your speed bar properly. Yeah. But I think from if you're starting, anyone could, could do it and they'll just progress at their own pace. You don't need to look at the guy beside you, the girl beside you who's doing a combination of uh, 20, 20 combos. If anything, it, it should inspire you to get there, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like, if you see some of my stories, like a lot of people are like, oh, I want to do that. I'll tell them you're not ready yet. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you're, it'll, you'll get there but we still need to work. Like you mentioned, people that are starting pretty much from the couch to boxing, already that first class, they've already done so much more than what they're used to. And then class after class, they're going to be improving, improving. So, uh, you know, it's it's a fight within themselves and and uh, day to day, they're improving. Just like just like uh, my clients and, and the people that, that follow my routines, very similar, right? Like they might just be very doing like little sitting and standing or working out from the bed, but that's already one little step up from doing absolutely 100%. zero. And what's good with boxing, it's so, it's so, it's infinity. Like you always learn and you can always go on like weaknesses, right? 
So like some people have uh, maybe their footwork is not as good as their hand, like their power or like their coordination, like, and it's, you can always focus like on a particular class. Okay, look, you, you can punch, but your, your feet is not there. So I like that when I, when, when, when I coach or when I teach, you can always break it down. And when you improve one part, everything is nicer. Yeah. So it's like, okay, your footwork, and they might be frustrated, which is fine. It's again, it's part of the mental, you know, like, uh, the mental fortitude. Oh, you don't like that? Well, too bad. You, we have to do it. You know, you have to do it. You'll get, you want to get better. We have to do it. We can't just concentrate on your strength. You know, what I mean, you've yeah. got to concentrate on your weaknesses. So especially you're building a foundation, sport. right? Right, right, exactly. So especially yeah. in a, any combat sport, you know, you don't want to just cut corners and you, by cutting that corner in the actual. Because I always put it back to fighting, because that's mainly it. But you know, if you, I, I put that in them where like, I think that you're fighting, even though you're not going to fight, you have that mindset of like a warrior, like you're going to, you're going to go in. So if you, if you're lacking on your footwork, that's going to cause you to fight or you might lose the fight because you can't get away. You can't reach the opponent. You know, you need your feet to get there, not just hands and, and punches. Right. So I like where you could focus different aspects of boxing, defense, offense, footwork, you know, coordination and the whole, the whole thing. Yeah. So what's step one for someone that has never boxed before and they join your class? What, what do you, what do you teach them on day one of your class? Uh, stance, right? Your stance is, it's your foundation. Your legs is day one. That's what you have to, you have to always make sure that you're in a proper boxing stance. Uh, then it's footwork than punches why is stance the most important thing so you when you think of boxing you think punching should be the first why stance and footwork comes before like two steps before actual uh punches that, that's your foundation your your strength comes from there your speed comes from there uh when you think about it if you want to get close to to your opponent you need your feet you're not just going to jump yeah. jump to your opponent you need to get there with your with your footwork but also in order to do the punches, you need to be under your legs. So if your legs are crossed, too narrow, too wide, even getting getting a punch off won't even come off properly because down there is wrong. Yeah. Right? So people want to punch, but their legs are not under them. Their foundation is not under them. Their punch itself won't be, not, won't be correct. Right? And you won't be able to do the actual body mechanic for the punch. So if you were to be aligned and both your feet are on the same line, you can't have no transfer of weight. You can't transfer one leg to the other. You need to have like a tripod stance. I would always say that yeah. as a metaphor. One leg here, one leg there, like a tripod, right? So there's stability. So if you don't have the foundation, you can't do offense, you cannot do defense. Uh, or if you're doing offense and defense, there'll be holes, right? They'll be done poorly, basically. So stance is the very, very foundation of, of, of actually any, like combat sport, basically. Hmm. Do you have any, um, any clients that since the beginning when you started, um, any specific stories of, you know, they started off, like you mentioned, from the couch, and then now they're kind of like throwing combos or people that just weren't great in life. And then now they, they, they're using this as, as an outlet. I mean, you have so many amazing people that, you feel yes, I, I have uh, I have a few. I had one uh one girl. She came, <laughs> and I would do her, her footwork was uh was really not on point. So like before even stance or whatever, I would just do ladder drills. So just getting her footwork, not not nothing to do really with the stance or anything like that. Just getting her footwork as a warm up, like in and outs in 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 a ladder. Mm -hmm. going side by side just to just to get her coordination right and uh if i were to show you i don't have any videos of it but if i were to show if i remember her first session and what she's doing now it has it's been a while she, she took a little break right now but what she was doing most recently it's day and night oh yeah day and night. It, it's it's beautiful to see actually you're like like you've made something out of nothing basically and how did That's you how get her to just improve her her coordination? Repetition. Her, repetition. 
Yeah, repetition, repetition. And also, like, not rushing things, basically. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, uh, sometimes they'll get it, but that one time you get it is not enough. You'll, you know, you need to redo it, make the same mistake, probably, and then get it. And a lot of the time is feeling, right? Yeah. So like, you'll do a punch or you'll do a, a footwork, and you'll feel it. You'll be yeah. like, okay, this is the right punch. Oh, it connected properly. And there is like a something happens in your body where it remembers that. And so whenever you hit, it makes a different sound. I don't know. It doesn't connect properly. You know you hit it wrong. So you're your you're gonna do it in a way it's gonna it's gonna hit right. But long story short, her, she was very, very committed. She would come like obviously frequency does it helps, right? So well, she would come two to three right. times. Sorry? Oh yeah, exactly. Consistency. consistency. Exactly. You know, so she would come two to three times a week and she would practice some drills at home. So I would say if you really want to improve, don't just wait for the next class. Hmm. You could do stuff on uh, by yourself at home. You could watch videos uh, on YouTube. There's so many things on YouTube now that you can learn from. Well, now and that you have, the thing was now that you have your own videos, they can watch that. Too, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> that that's too, I'm, I'm, I'm so I'm so blessed that you put me on like that too. Like I'm not really a internet or like social media guy. So like the fact well, let's, that let's jump to that. Let's jump to that a bit. Uh, like since we're on the topic now, um, right. The reason why we're talking right now is because we filmed a series of videos for beginners who want to start their boxing uh, journey. And uh, it's pretty much what we spoke about, right? Like let's talk about, the program that you wrote, because I kind of, of course, asked you to write the program for boxing for beginners, because I myself am a beginner in this, uh, in this part of uh, sports. Um, what is the program that you wrote for us? What, what are the steps that we're taking? Um, and how can it help your, your average beginner to get started? So basically, it's what I was what we were saying earlier. So our program is, is made of Basically, the very first section is the basics. So like I said earlier, your foundation, which is your stance. Once you have the stance, which is not too hard to, to grasp, you just have to feel comfortable in the stance that will be shown in the video. Once you have that, we transfer to footwork. So just basic footwork. We, we want to learn how to walk before we run, right? Mm -hmm. So step by step, forward, backward, left and right for now. Once that's done, now we're into uh, the actual punches, which is a lot of people find that the most fun part, right? The punches. So you, you there's six punches, but we're going to start with three. And those are the three at which you could, uh, it's the jab, the cross, and the hook. One, two, three, basically, uh, to make it easier to to comprehend. And with those punches, you could do a variation of combinations and switch it up. But for the program that is actually um, shown, it's just repeating the same jab, the same punch over and over, one by one. And then we'll have a drill where we put all three together where you could actually you know, do a few drills and actually push yourself. But that first section is really just to get the technique. I wouldn't rush it one bit. Take your time and listen well to the minor instructions. Small details make a big difference. Mm -hmm. So if you were to just turn your jab, put your leg the right way, twist your hip, transfer your weight, that's what will make the difference. Um, and all of these, while you're doing it, you can do it, what you're doing on basically the video, you can do it at home without the video. You can take one segment, just repeat that one. And you don't have to do it for 30 minutes. Take a few, a one round, two rounds, two minutes, one minute, and redo it. Repeat it. Look at look at the tips that I've said. Look at yourself in the mirror. That's the best way. Be your own coach. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if one hand's down, oh, let me put that back up. If one hand's not turning, oh, let me let me turn that properly like it was shown. So that's the first part. It's just the pure fundamentals of your stance, your footwork. And one, two, three, jab, cro uh, jab, cross, and hook. From then, we have a main workout where we incorporate everything, or it's more dynamic. You move, 
you punch, you move, you punch, you move, you punch. Depending on how, uh, you know, your level in terms of cardio, you could speed it up. So in boxing, you could do things at a slow pace, one, two, three, or you could do it fast, one, two, three. So depending on where you are in, in terms of your cardio, you could always increase your level or decrease it if you need to. There's no, it's no right and wrong, right? So it's timer base. You do as many repetitions as you can within that, that I think we put up, I think I put a minute for each, right? Yes. So one minute each. Uh, and then the very last section, uh, it's a cardio blast. So I don't focus much on the technique, but in order to be able to perform these techniques at a high level, like at the most efficient, you want your stamina and cardio up. So if you you have a higher cardio stamina, you can do all of these uh, better, like faster, stronger. You can last longer within your, you could extend your round from one minute to two. So that's more just a, a cardio blast. So it's, again, it involves punching more or less, uh, your stance can be varied a bit, but it's just, just push yourself one minute and just go, go, go. Because like in boxing, there's going to be parts where you have no choice to just put everything on the line if you want to win, right? So I put it like in that way, your one minute of cardio at the end, you push your heart rate, you push your mind, you go as fast as you can. You don't leave anything behind. You put it all in it. Obviously, if, if, if you, you know, as much as you can, don't kill yourself as, you know, <laughs> so to speak, you know, just go as as fast as you can at your own pace, but as fast as you can, if you feel like it's too much, just lower it down, but push yourself, put that in your head. Okay. This is, I'm pushing myself here. It's a, it's a, it's a, a workout to, to really push on myself. It's not, let me not concentrate too much on turning the technique, but just push the heart rate and get that going. So it, it's, it's three different sections. So you have, your technical learning, each the stance, the footwork, the punches. Then you have technical learning in terms of putting it all in in one in one motion, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Move, punch, move, punch, move, punch. And then the last one is the cardio aspect, the conditioning aspect of boxing, where uh, you just we go like it's almost like a like hit basically. Yeah, high yeah, intensity yeah. workout, just on, on, on off on off or high intensity low intensity high intensity low intensity and whenever in your you're in your high intensity you give it give it your all yeah and I, what i love about your program is you know you think that boxing is going to be something high impact high intensity but what you really stress in your in your program is to focus on technique first and foremost before you ramp it up Right. And right. And pretty much all the moves are low impact. We're not jumping anywhere. We're we're bending the knees, but we're not going too low. We're striking. Right. But we're not really hitting anything. It's it's, it's not shadow anything. boxing. So so anyone can do this. And I think it's right. just gonna gonna open up. I mean, nothing replaces being one on one with you and people that I are will say though. Yeah. I will say though, a lot of people get they're in love with the actual contact so with hitting pads and yeah. bags right but i will say that if you master the shadow boxing you will be better at hitting mm -hmm. something afterwards so a lot of the people like to just hit and what happens when you hit a bag or a um, a mitt is that there's a resistance so for example you hit you hit my mitt here i'll stop you but if my hit my mitt wasn't there who knows how far you would go would you overreach would you tip over? Would you go off balance? So by doing a lot of shadow boxing, it helps you control and stop right at the right moment and you don't need to overextend and overpower. So it removes a lot of those little things where you think, uh, okay, uh, I'm not getting the pad work. But if you're putting as much intensity in your shadow boxing and then mastering that and then coming into a one-on-one -on -one where you want to hit pads guarantee that hitting pads will be a lot more efficient hitting the bag will be a lot more efficient a lot of the coaches including myself will tell you like you'll be able to see a good fighter or a good boxer with their shadow boxing not with their mitts not with the bag not by fighting it's with their shadow boxing so that's so interesting program, yeah i know i didn't program, think about that yeah. so the shadow boxing the program for shadow box like that i'm i'm teaching is basically shadow 
wants it, right? So, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah, that's amazing, and and it's a lot of fun too. It's it's always fun to to take on a new challenge, and um, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm excited to launch this. I'm excited for people to to start doing this. Uh, like Me I was too. mentioning, you know, <laughs> no one can really replace being one on one with you because you have a way of teaching that's just so great. I mean, obviously, your clients. Uh, have so many testimonials so many great things to say and you know they're reoccurring and obviously you're very successful doing this but this is also the next best thing for them so that they can understand and learn and what i love of your style of coaching is also your calm you know you have a very calm demeanor and uh you know you're intense when it needs to be but you're also calm and which i think that's kind of like the boxer's mentality where can people contact you or uh, where can people follow you? How, how if they want to do a, a session with you, where can they book? So you can follow me on Instagram at Mpardo Velasco. Uh, it'll translate to MPV Boxing. Mpardo Velasco on Instagram. Uh, on I do have a website. You can go see mpvboxing.com. You can book directly through the website or once you have my Instagram, there's a link on my uh, bio where you could book a session. And if you need information, just, you know, send a DM or a text. Uh, my email is also on my website, phone numbers on my website as well. So if you want to get a hold of me before taking a class, just to clarify a few information, don't hesitate. I will be happy to give you the information you are asking for. All right, Justin. All right. Thank you. I appreciate it. I'll talk soon. Thank you, man. Take care, bro. All right.